Charles Gate. Yeah, just in case you ain't heard of me, they told me it was too late. But I promise that I'll be the first to speak. Most of these rappers, they fake. But you can't have your way to St. Burkhead. Everybody said it won't be. Till they see smoke, then they realize they'd rather have turkey me. 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 What it do, what it do, it's 903 Boxing, I'm your host, Charles J. Yeah, I'm back with this shit, and I ain't through with you motherfuckers yet. Uh, first and foremost, um, now I had to touch this shit again. How good was In A Way Too Good, or the Cool Boy Believe The Hype? That's a question I must pose. Uh, also... I, I'm just gonna dig deep into this shit. I didn't go deep enough. Um, this shit is deeper than boxing. Um, I said I was done with Cool Boy. Um, nah, I ain't gonna say I'm through with you, bro, but I question you. Just like I question many fighters. I, just like I question a lot of fighters. Uh, I question you. There's a big question mark on your name at this point. Uh, just look at this. Look at this picture right before they're fighting. Look at this right when they're in the ring. You ain't never seen Cool Boy look like that before they finna fight. You ain't never seen Cool Boy look that fucking. He always look mean. From the way in to the face off, he look you in your eyes and he always had it. Man, Cool Boy in every face off. He looks at you like I want to kill, like I want to harm you, bro. I'm here to hurt you. He looked tired of shit. He looked like, let's get this shit over with. I'm just going to say what I feel, bro. I'm going to say what I thought and what I seen. Uh, like I said, this shit deeper than boxing. This shit deeper than boxing. And the reason why I said I ain't through with Cool Boy, um, I don't know what they told you when you was out there. Because let's just be honest. I'm tired of you motherfuckers acting like this some honest shit. Boxing, I'm telling you, bro, it's like the most disloyal broad that will fuck your homeboy and fuck over everybody. That's how boxing is, but she got good pussy. That, that's what boxing is. It's the most beautiful sport, but it's the most corrupt, nasty, disgusting, filled with some of the most disgusting, money hungry, some of the most evil motherfuckers in this country or in boxing. Boxing, you can do some wild shit in boxing. You can do some wild shit in boxing. So, I'm just going to tell you this, bro. I know I, people ain't really thought to even think this shit. <laughs> but, now nah, it's a reason why uh, Inouye is fighting in Japan now. Uh, He got the mob uh, with him, bro. The Japanese mob, because you motherfuckers don't think outside the box, and you just think that shit exists over here. No, bro, Japan, it, it got some dangerous part, and they got some motherfuckers with power. They put money. All gangsters have always, gangsters have always been involved in boxing, and that's their new star. So they got a lot of money behind him, and I guarantee you, in Japan, a lot of people made a lot of money. Everybody betting on in a way. So I don't know what they told. I don't know if one of them motherfuckers came in, uh, uh, the, the night before the weigh-in came and, and told you what I don't know, bro. But all I know is I ain't never seen Cool Boy not go in the fight and try to win. Cool Boy, I ain't never in my life seen Cool Boy go in a fight and look nervous as shit and scared to throw the jab. I, and, and you know, I just seen I just seen some motherfucker that ain't even a Japanese. I don't know what he is. Uh, but he's a bit. I'm, I guarantee you, he's from America because America is America is. You motherfuckers got the tip of, in a way, dick in your mouth. Yeah, in my motherfucking Pimp C voice. Listen, uh, no, bro. You motherfuckers, just, just, just calm down. Just hold your horses. Uh, just calm down, bro. Calm the fuck down. Like I said, bro, everybody know how Cool Boy fight. Cool Boy is one of the most... When you talk about controlling the ring, when you talk about demanding, like, control over the ring, when you talk about adjustment after adjustment, I done seen this motherfucker make three or four adjustments in a fight. Cool Boy not made not one adjustment. Cool Boy never even tried to fight on the inside. And you can talk that shit. Oh, in a way, hit him with some shit. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. All the way up to about the third or fourth round when in a way really started landing shit. He was missing with a lot of them shots, and Cool Boy was catching them with the gloves. Cool Boy just came out timid, shaking with that goddamn power and with that jab like he didn't want to throw it. 
Um, he didn't throw a right hand to about the fourth round. So, it's a lot of shit, bro. Um, at this point, like I said, I ain't done with Jakub. Because I don't know. Maybe you just wanted to get out of Japan safely. I don't know what the fuck. Because, like I said, one thing. And black folks are the. Y'all the only motherfuckers who think the way you think. Uh, you know, it ain't never a conspiracy when it's a black uh, man involved. But it's a conspiracy, bro. Um, one thing about black folks, and that's why I hate when we go overseas, everybody know, bro, it ain't nothing backing us up. It, no matter what happened to you, that's why black folks, it's getting dangerous going on vacation. You hearing about these black folks coming up missing when they go to Puerto Rico and Dominica and going on all these trips. A lot of black folks are coming up missing because we ain't, ain't nobody going to fight for us. Nah, maybe mama, a, a few aunties, a couple, a, a few cousins, one or two siblings. The other siblings may not give a fuck. That's how we are. We ain't gonna fight for each other, and everybody knows so we can fuck over our fighters the easy. It, it's the easiest to fuck over a black fighter. So anyway, uh, <laughs> I said anyway. It sounds like I said anyway, but anyway, uh. Nah, bro, we ain't got no power like that. I tell you, you motherfuckers, I ain't even got no bones. You motherfuckers got them Draco, but you ain't got no bones. Ain't nobody scared of black folks, but black folks. So, <laughs> anyway, we ain't got shit. But, uh, yeah, like I said, bro, um, I made an example. I, and, you know, only black, I'm going to say this too. Only black fighters do this. Only black fighters look timid in some of their biggest moments. Only black fighters have done shit like this. You don't see no other fighter do that. And that's why I said I think a lot of these motherfuckers are telling these black fighters before some of these fights. Don't don't fuck with our money. Look how Tony Harrison looked against Tim Zoo when he went to Australia. Tony Harrison was timid as fuck. Tony Harrison was never looked like he was even trying to win. So like I said, bro, I've seen this a lot. I've seen this shit a lot. Danny Jacobs when he fought Canelo. Bro, and this is another example that I gotta say. This is why I can't give you only so much credit because I didn't see the best version of Cool Boy. Just like with Canelo. I remember when Canelo beat Danny Jacob, everybody said he was so slick because he was slipping them punches and turning his head and he was bobbing and weaving and he, that motherfucker looked like Roy Jones that night. But also a fighter can sh do a shitty performance and make you look more spectacular than what you are. Danny Jacobs made Canelo look like he was Floyd that night. Danny Jacobs was pawing, throwing them little three little pawing ass jabs and missing and throwing a sloppy ass right. He was... Man, like I said, I will always question that Danny Jacobs performance because I know for a fact he had every tool there was to beat Canelo. All he had to do was outwork him and you can outbox him and you got the chin to withhold anything he got coming. Danny Jacobs came in that fight looking timid and was on his bike the entire fight. Was first, was scared to engage, but when he hit Canelo with a big ass right hand in the seventh round, Canelo backed up and he never threw another big punch. So, I, I see black fighters do it all the time when they fight a non-black fighter. See, this is another reason why I'm promoting black fighters fight each other because we need to show up in our tools <laughs> because we ain't going to fight nobody harder than when, when we're going to fight each other. Uh, another example I want to make, like I said, bro, the energy will remain the same. When Spence and Bud fight, bro, uh, the, high, the highest expectations are required of both of them. Both fighters better give it they all, bro, or I will talk shit, bro. I'm going to lose respect for it. If you go in that bit, if Spence lay down at any point in that fight, bro, I'm, because I, it's, it's what I believe in you. Because I thought Kuba was one of the dog of all dog. He showed no dog in that fight. Kuba never really showed any urgency. What was the urgency, bro? You motherfuckers can talk all that. In a way, it was just faster. He was just quicker. He was too skilled. That ain't got nothing to do with the urgency, bro, within a fighter to win. You never saw it, bro. He never was urgent. Wasn't shit urgent. Uh, Kubo was laid back that whole fight. You you ain't never seen Kubo look that timid. Like I said, Kubo believed the hype. In a way, it's very good, and he was impressive. His defense was very impressive to me. His defense, and like I said, he got good hand speed. I like his combinations. But also, I, I didn't see the version of Kubo that would have really showed me how good you are. If I'd have seen a cool boy that wanted to win and you done that to that version of a cool boy, then I can speak more upon how good you are, pimping. 
uh, nah, pimpin', uh, we gonna do this shit. We gonna treat you just like we treat black fighters. We gonna hold you up to the highest standard, bro. You gotta do some spectacular shit. And like I said, you ain't on my top 10 pound for pound. No, because of the version of cool boy you beat. Imagine if Andre Ward had to beat a sloppy. Imagine if Andre Ward had to beat the version of Kovalev that fought Canelo. Uh, Andre Ward would have got no credit for fighting a Kovalev that's not trying to win. Kovalev wasn't trying to win against Canelo. He threw that fight, and we all know it. So, um, yeah, your, your performance got to do with how the other fighter fight, too. Like I said, if Spence fight, if Spence beat Crawford, but Crawford go in that motherfucker looking timid, I will lose respect for Bud. And, and it's going to be hard for me to give Spence his full credit. Yeah, I'm going to give you credit, but I, it's hard to say you pound for pound because I didn't see Crawford. In his, you, you, Like I said, bro, you got to perform. You got to perform. And, and listen, I give you credit in a way. When you in your hometown and you perform in front of all your people, you perform, bro. You even did some Roy Jones shit during the fight. You start doing slick shit. I know you've been watching this for a while. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you good, bro. You just ain't that good. You ain't that fucking good, bro. You ain't that good, bro. Like I said, um, this is what you're going to have to do to get on my pound for pound list. Uh, you need to immediately go up to 126 and fight Brandon Figueroa. And I'm going to tell you right now, I got Brandon Figueroa in that fight. Brandon Figueroa is strong. He's going to be in your chest. And one thing about Brandon Figueroa, um, it ain't going to be as much pressure on him to throw the fight or to be timid or whatever they told Cool Boy to do. It ain't going to be pressure upon uh, Figueroa because he do got Mexicans behind him. And he got a flag behind him. Ain't no flag behind Cool Boy. That American flag didn't nobody in America wave that motherfucker when they announced Cool Boy name. But anyway, so Figueroa, he'll have a better chance. Uh, yeah. Most fighters, there's none black. Just they don't mind losing, but they don't want to lose to a black fighter. You know. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this is what you got to do. You got to beat Figueroa. Then you got to jump up to 130. You got to beat a Shaky Foster. You got to beat him. Uh, then you got to jump up to 135. You got to beat Shakur. You got to beat Tank. You got to beat Frank Martin. Uh, then if you jump up and clear out 140 and beat Matias and beat Regis, uh, beat Devin, you do some shit. As a matter of fact, if you jump up one more weight class, jump up to 147 and beat Boots and beat Virgil Ortiz and beat Stanley Owens, uh, yeah, I'll put you in the top 10 then. Because we're going to hold you to the same. And matter of fact, all non-black fighters, you motherfuckers will be held to a high standard. Just like we hard on black fighters, I'm going to be hard on you motherfuckers. You motherfuckers got to prove more. Bro, that fast shit look good, bro. But one thing about it, the biggest flaw that I saw in Cool Boy, I'm going to keep saying these things. Cool Boy wasn't mean like he normally is. He wasn't mean. We never saw his ring IQ. Cool Boy got one of the highest ring IQs in box. We didn't see that shit. He never even wanted to show him I'm a smarter fighter than you. Cool Boy was timid. And like I said, Cool Boy, let me tell you something. And if it wasn't no mob shit and there wasn't nobody missing his hair, this is what it is. If it wasn't that, it was the fact that Cool Boy may have really fell for the hype. Sometimes, bro, you can lose a fight before you get in the ring. You can lose. I didn't see motherfuckers lose a fight because of the resume and and the and the record that this and the reputation that this dude got. They already lost before they got in there. They already heard he a knockout artist. In. I mean, he knocked everybody out. So he already lost before he got in there. There was no confidence in Cool Boy face in the entire fight, not even in the first round. You didn't show your ring IQ. You didn't show your strength, and you never fought on the inside. These are things that you always, you, and you never made adjustments. You never even tried to establish a jab, bro. This, this is the worst, and your defense was horrible. Like, this, this is the worst version of Cool Boy. I, I've never even seen you fight like that, bro. Like I said, it's just too much suspect shit for me to fully give you credit, bro. Yeah, in a way, you're good. You got fast hands. You got power. And shout out to you, and you're going to make Japan a lot of money. But, uh, yeah, that's the list of shit you got to do to uh, impress me. But uh, also, I'm going to say this, too, because I done heard Jamel and Jamal Cholo say a lot of shit about uh, and praise Canelo and Canelo and he's doing this and he's fighting the best. Well, Jamel, you finna fight him, bro. 
And I'm going to tell you right now, bro, this whole fight with Canelo depends on Jamel. Whether he win or lose, it depends on you because I know what Canelo going to do. I know his feet are very slow. I know he tried to throw them little left hooks to the body, but his feet are very slow. He do the same shit that Bob and Weave and try to wait on a counter punch. He don't th throw very many punches. Jamel can easily outwork him. But if you go in that motherfucker looking at Canelo as a god or some shit and looking at him as if he's greater than or some shit and believe all that shit. Canelo went on a three-year white boy tour and everybody said that shit was pound for pound. Nah, bro, Jamel, you got to go in there and not respect. That's why I say you fighters ain't built like Sugar Ray Leonard now. I'm talking about don't respect a motherfucker in the ring. You motherfuckers ain't built like that, so I don't know. You motherfuckers get timid. It, it's a lot of shit, bro. Um, I, I don't know, bro. Um, but yeah, in a way, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, and I'm gonna make a bold prediction. This is why I want you. I want you to go on a black journey. <laughs> nah, I want you to go on a fight number black fighter and just beat because I'm gonna I'm gonna make a bold prediction. Uh, in a way, will never lose to a black fighter. Uh yeah, he'll never lose to a black fighter. In my that that shit ain't gonna happen. If he fight Tank, he gonna beat Tank. Because at this point, I think in a way will be supplied with all the tools he need to beat any black fighter. Ain't no black fighter in boxing finna beat uh in a way. I predict he gonna lose to a Mexican. It might be Figueroa. Uh, might be Virgil. I ain't no telling. It might be one of them. Uh, but now nah, it ain't gonna be no black fight. He will not lose to a black fight because one thing, no black fighter got the power that Floyd had. See, that's why Floyd won that fight. It couldn't be no bullshit, and Pacquiao had to come to Vegas. So it, it, it's a lot of shit, bro. Um, you remember when Tim Bradley beat Pacquiao, and that motherfucker said he was depressed and all this shit. Remember them? Remember them? Uh, remember them Philippines with tying his ass up and wishing death on his kids and. Threatening him. Uh, Pacquiao fans are some of the most hateful son of a bitches that ever uh, was in boxing. Yeah, they threatened his family, wanting him to die. And he going to get depressed. Instead of enjoying your win and saying, fuck you motherfuckers. And being proud and confident as a black man, he folded and tucked his tail and felt bad for beating Pacquiao. So I don't know. It's a lot of fighters that's built like that. Maybe I, I think it's going to be a lot of fighters that really don't want to be in a way and destroy his legacy. And just want to show the greatness. And they just want to share the ring. Remember, it was Black Friday. Remember, uh, Jamal was talking, I just want to share the ring with you and all that old soft-ass shit. I'm telling you, until you motherfuckers get in the ring and show no respect and fight like you'll fight that Black Friday. You'll fight like you fought uh, Tyrone in the hood. You'll fight like that, and you ain't going to lose to nothing. <laughs> but this is 903 Boxing. I'm your host, Joel Jake. With that, I'm out.